Yeah. Okay, so, so we're talking about two different states of glucose metabolism. One of them is considered pathologic, and that means yes. that it's going to increase your risk for chronic disease and type 2 diabetes. And the other one is considered to be non-pathologic. Now, um, when I was and, first introduced to this concept... And has been associated with improvements in type 2 diabetes and many other things, which we can get into. Okay, so when I was first introduced to this concept, I was actually very intrigued by it because it was something that was brand new to me and something that I hadn't really read about in the research. And um, I will admit that, that when I go into the research and I look for differences between pathologic and, and physiologic insulin resistance or glucose sparing, however you want to refer to it, I'm having a difficult time coming up with actual research that, that sort of shows the consequences in the long term. Maybe you're privy to some information that I don't have. And if so, I would like to read this information. But um, from what I've found so far, even though there is a distinction and it's, it's likely that the two scenarios can lead to drastically different outcomes, I'm having a difficult time finding research that actually backs this up. You haven't found okay. research on long-term ketogenic diets? Well, define long-term. Uh, uh, five there's, there's, years? Okay, so there is there, there definitely is research on ketogenic diets over the course of like one year, two years, five years. It's a yeah. small number of papers. And um, there's actually, again, if you're taking a look at the glucose-centric picture of a ketogenic diet, then you get a poor outcome. No, well, what do you mean by a poor outcome? I disagree with you there. That's, that's an unfair characterization. Okay, so because people are getting people are getting more insulin sensitive. They are Define, using, shop, 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 shop. Define insulin sensitivity. How right, are you they are that? having lower levels of fasting blood glucose. They are having weight loss. They are having reduced no, no, inflammatory no, 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 no. Sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. You said lower levels of fasting glucose. That is one of two components of insulin sensitivity. And lower, lower glucose, no, wait, stop. Lower levels of fasting insulin. And if you take these people, if you take someone on a ketogenic diet, and we need to get into this and actually clarify what we're talking about here with this glucose yep, yep, yep. refusal, and you feed them carbohydrates for 24 to 72 hours, they will ace a, a hyperglycemic, uh, a euglycemic hyperinsulinemic clamp. They will ace it. They will ace an OGTT. Because what is happening here, and I'll just go ahead and ex ex explain this to people. So in low carbohydrate diet states, and there are papers which show that pregnant mothers who undergo OGTTs, oral glucose tolerance tests, which are not euglycemic hyperinsulinemic clamps, but they are a big bolus of glucose in the form of a glucola solution, um, they can fail these if they have a low carb meal the night before. Because sure. what happens when we eat a low carbohydrate meal, the muscle, this is, and I want to uh, explore this physiology with you, the, the, the fat cells, when the fat cells see insulin drop, right, um, then they will release, uh, then hormone-sensitive lipase is activated. There is increased free fatty acids in the blood, and the increased free fatty acids in the blood signal to the muscle tissue. So we have adipocytes responding to lowered levels of insulin, which is generally a good thing, which is what will happen when we eat low-carbohydrate diets. And that will signal to the muscle cells that, hey, you don't need to take up glucose because you have free fatty acids. So that the muscle cells see the free fatty acids and then they pause. They do glucose sparing and they will not take up glucose. Now, this is important. It's all starting with the muscle cell, right? In, in times of Physi of non-physiologic or pathogenic insulin resistance. Again, I would say that muscle-centric paradigm in which people are eating a low-carbohydrate diet starts with the muscle as it doesn't need glucose because it has free fatty acids. When someone has insulin resistance and is hyperinsulinemic, hyperglycemic, as we would imagine a type 2 diabetic to be, it starts with the adipocyte. And the adipocyte is becoming insulin resistant and they are sitting, it is not doing the proper uh, formation of palmitoleic acid relative to palmitate. And the adipocyte is what is signaling to the rest of the body. The adipocyte is not seeing the insulin signal. So it's insulin resistance in the adipocyte in type 2 diabetes and it's glucose sparing that starts in the muscle in a low carbohydrate diet. But these are not the same. They look similarly, but only if we're not careful to distinguish which tissue is reacting. 